we're just going to talk about the games. Let's just talk about them. And the first game that I'd like to talk about okay. is the Alamo Bowl. Mm. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, you God. still like this game? Oh, man. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't really the... like the game at all now with Iowa State in it, but I like your reaction to it. So, how do you, you feel want about me to the talk Alamo about it right now? Yeah, let's talk okay. about it. <laughs> I had just gotten back from Vegas on Sunday, and I get home, I'm hanging out at the apartment with Olivia and her brother. We're just watching Red Zone. We'd order Wingstop. We're waiting on Wingstop to get there, just relaxing, and I'm on Twitter. And I don't even know how I saw it because probably just one of the college football reporters I follow. But they retweeted the Alamo Bowl announcing the matchup of Iowa State and Washington State. And I lost my GD mind. <laughs> like, I just started <laughs> dropping F bombs like crazy and like screaming. And they're like, what is going on? What is going on? And I was like, Iowa State is going to the Alamo Bowl over us. And I knew instantly, like I didn't even see the announcement. I knew we were going to the Camping World Bowl. <laughs> and it just triggered me and pissed me off. Because this team does not deserve to play in the Camping World Bowl against freaking Syracuse. And so I decided to just break. And you might ask yourself, well, Kyle, didn't Iowa State beat West Virginia? Kyle... Didn't Iowa State beat West Virginia? Yes, Colby. They did. Okay. But guess what? Who gives a shit? <laughs> because it was one game, all right? And uh-huh. the reason... Let's break down why or how Iowa State ended up there over West Virginia. Let's. So they they tie for um, third place in the Big 12 um, behind Texas and OU. And so when they tie, the committee can just choose who they want. Um, so they chose Iowa State. Now, Why did they choose Iowa State? So the president of the Alamo Bowl said one of the reasons that they went with Iowa State was because the fan base was excited mm. for this bowl. They wanted to be in this bowl. Okay. Now, I ask you, how can you tell if West Virginia fans were excited or not? You didn't invite them. Strawpo. Strawpo? There's Strawpo? Because, I mean, when they put their announcement out, if you looked at the replies, it was just a bunch of West Virginia people telling them to go F themselves <laughs> and how stupid they were and how ridiculous it was. Um, oh, God. You want to know why? It's because Jamie Pollard. We talked about Jamie Pollard on this show before. And in case you don't remember, he's Iowa State's stupid AD. And he illegally allowed them to wear black jerseys. When it's not one of their school yeah, colors. Absolutely. So that was one strike. Um, I'm sure there was a second strike in there. And this is his third strike. <laughs> okay? He tweeted the day before the bowl games came out, just FaceTime the AD at Incarnate Word to show him the beautiful snow he is missing out on. Uh, just for reference, Incarnate Word is in San Antonio, where the Alamo Bowl is. Thanks for that. He showed me his backyard, sunny and 75 degrees told him maybe I could see it in person around 1228, the day of the Alamo Bowl. That's tampering. Jamie is tampering. This is cheating. This is cheating. This is collusion. This is collusion. I agree. And I will not stand for it. I agree. And I'm going to bring you down, Jamie Pollard. And the Alamo. If I have to bring the Alamo Bowl and the Alamo down, I'll do it. Have you been to the Alamo? I have. It is so underwhelming. Really underwhelming. Also, eight million people. Yes. A million people. We drove over to it and then drove right by it and went and did something else. See, we like went in and we did the whole thing and I was just like, this is it. Mm. Like, I, I, we were all, I think... I had the this is it reaction from the outside mm-hmm. coupled with, there are this many people here for that. You should go inside. It's a big empty room. Wow. It's really awesome. Wow. Really big empty room. It's really <laughs> cool. So we don't want your stupid bowl game anyways. But... <laughs> So he's just out there. He was obviously like talking to him and begging him and making their case just to get in the bowl game. Uh, the committee mentioned that Iowa State won seven of their last eight games. Okay, that's that's cool, <laughs> sweet, and that's really nice. They also lost to the team that West Virginia beat um, in Texas. Uh, and then Iowa State was eight and four. West Virginia was eight and three. They also had a game canceled the first week of the season due to lightning. Mm-hmm. So Iowa State played a makeup game last Saturday against Drake. Drake, not the rapper. 
not the rapper, in-state rival Drake, if FCS Drake, okay, did not make the playoffs FCS Drake. They had to score a touchdown with under a minute to go in the third quarter to finally take the lead and win the game 27-24. Sounds like an Alamo Bowl team to me. Well, the president of the Alamo Bowl had an explanation for why the game was so close. Oh. Um, Because some people questioned that. And he said... Um, the field conditions kept the contest from being an accurate measure of either team. Well, it was really nice of the Alamo Bowl guy to come out and defend. Like, they're State. having to defend this decision because it is terrible. Wow. Um, now, this is what you could have had if you chose West Virginia. First of all, West Virginia's ranked eight spots higher in the college football playoff rankings and ten spots higher in the AP poll. Okay. You could have had number 13, Wazoo, against number 16, West Virginia. It would have been the, the Leach and Dana Bowl. Yes, exactly. That was my next point. You could have had Mike Leach versus Dana Holgerson. Uh, Dana Holgerson played football under Mike Leach, and then he coached with him. He was literally mentored by Mike Leach. Also, the press conferences for that thing would have been electric. Oh, my gosh. You had these two just electric factories. You could have had Will Greer versus Gardner Minshew, two guys that are going to finish in the top five in Heisman voting. Hmm. Two of the best quarterbacks in the country. Definitely didn't want that. We'd rather have Brock Purdy. Uh, you could have had two teams that were ranked in the top ten for the most of the second part of the season and have been in the national spotlight since, like, well, West Virginia's been a top 15 team literally the whole season. Yeah, Washington for the last State, month, Wazoo and West Virginia have been playing for a playoff spot. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, you could have had, and you as a natural observer told me, were like, was like, man, if that was West Virginia and Washington State, I'd be glued to that. Oh, I'd be locked in. I'd watch outside, all four quarters. Outside of the playoff game, if you look at the bowl slate, that would be like the one where everyone's like, heck yeah, I'm watching that game. It would have, and I'm not just saying this because you're my friend and I sit like three feet to your left. Yeah. It would have been the premier non-New like New Year's Six Bowl of all of bowl season, and it might have been the premier non-playoff game of yes, bowl season. Yes, absolutely. 1,000%. Um they could have had, and because of that, they could have, they would have had the nation's attention. TV ratings would have been through the roof. And then the the president mentioned that, you know, Iowa State they they travel so well, and then they and they get tickets, they sell tickets. Do you not think West Virginia versus Washington State wouldn't sell tickets? West Virginia fans want to watch Will Greer play one last time. They want to watch David Sills play one last time. They want to watch well, Gary Jennings play one last time. Like, and again. Back to even your previous point, even if West Virginia fans don't make the patronage from Morgantown to San Antonio in quite the same way as they will from Ames, the neutral college football fan, of which of which there are many in the state of Texas, yes, sir. You know, uh, I mean, I, look, I would have wanted to go to that game. Yeah, you know, from Austin to San Antonio, that's an easy drive. It's an hour. San Antonio yeah. people. Right there, Houston to San Antonio, Dallas to San Antonio, for that matter. Like I feel like that bowl game in particular would have had um, more neutral observers than any other Alamo Bowl yep. that I can think of. And I, I don't know how like involved the conferences are with these decisions. I really don't. Um, but how like the Big Twelve like can't see this opportunity and be like, yeah, we're gonna like go to bat for you and push for you because this is clearly the better matchup. We'll get more attention and more eyeballs on the team in our conference. And then if West Virginia wins that, it's like, man, that team was really good and it bolsters the Big 12 even more. Yeah. If Iowa State wins, it's just like, okay, that was like a good way to close your season. But it means absolutely nothing. But West Virginia wins that game and they have a chance to finish the season ranked in the top 10. Oh, easy. Yeah. Because teams in front of them play each other. They're going to lose. And that's a wazoo win is much better than somebody in the Music City Bowl. I mean, it's literally whatever. like a like a. I have to I have to work on this acronym. I will have to workshop it. Okay. But it's basically like the bummer you lost your last regular season game <laughs> and didn't get to go to the playoff bowl. Right. Like yes, so, it, that's exactly it's what it is. A lot of letters, but like I said, I'll work on it. Um, I don't know. I think that's all I got. It's it's mind blowing. It's completely disappointing. Like this team was a bad second half away and one stop away from playing the Big 12 championship game against Texas. And now we're in the Camping World Bowl against Syracuse. And Spay was like, oh, well, it's an old Big East rivalry. And, like, West Virginia and Syracuse, Syracuse do play for a trophy. But we do – like, 
West Virginia fans could give a shit less. I swear. Like, the, everyone is pissed off. No one cares. I, I responded to the camping world, boy. I said, we politely decline. <laughs> and I, it, got like, it got like 30 likes by all these people. I have no idea who they are. They just saw oh it. And then God. if you look down through the rest, it's like, what's the point? Like, we don't want to go. And people are like, well, I wouldn't bl- blame Will if he doesn't play now. And that's another thing is he might not play now. I think he wanted to play, like, a big-time team. He wanted yeah. another chance to, like, put stuff on film and, like, play in a big game. Syracuse in the freaking Camping World Bowl? Give me a break, man. The team deserves much better. You know what's going to happen soon now is West Virginia fans are not going to travel to the Camping World Bowl, and then it's going to like reinforce the Alamo yeah. Bowl's thought process right. of like, oh, they wouldn't have traveled here either. Well, that's the other thing is there's actually like a big alumni base in Dallas and here in Austin. There would have been a big crowd there. I, I don't want to hear the ticket sales thing. We would have sold just as many. You it's guys a, showed up okay for the Texas game. Yes, absolutely. There was a good number of people at the Oklahoma State game in Stillwater. Uh, we travel well for bowl games. I've been to like three or four myself, and it's always— Safe to say you will not be in attendance for the Camping World Bowl. I will not can be in— Can I report that? You can report that. Breaking. I would be fine if— I literally want Dan to be like, no, nah, we're not going. No thanks. <laughs> that would be like just the biggest boss move ever. Is he even? Is he going to call the plays? I don't know. One, I don't know. Apparently, <laughs> Spavadol is like in San Marcos now, right? Yeah, and that was another thing. That's like they interviewed Spavadol, and he's like, "No, I want to coach the bowl game." Um, it was like the Austin American Statesman interviewed him. He's like, "Yeah, I want to coach the bowl game, and I hope we're in the Alamo Bowl. It would make things a lot easier, just right down the road." Um, but apparently, on the they did a press conference the day they announced the games with Dino Babers and Dana, and. Uh, they asked Dana if Spavital was going to call the plays, and he's like, I don't know. I haven't talked to him since his press conference. <laughs> he's like, he's been recruiting. I've been recruiting. Just hasn't worked out. He's like, if he's not, I'm more than capable of it. <laughs> haven't talked to him. Can't send him a text and be like, hey, you going to call plays for me or not? Dana's just like not one of those people. You know, he's just like, ah, I got to do it. I got to do it. Okay. I don't know. Well, that was this... spectacular, man. That was even better than I thought it would be. Well, good, because I'm pissed off. And I really don't even care what happens. I don't like season was pointless and meaningless and football is stupid. Wow. But I can't wait for next year because <laughs> I'm going to be back in on this team. I know it. Uh, okay. And you know what? I'm still here. For Yep, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> for a few years there, um, you know, when the new Big 12 was like formed – it was mm-hmm. like, okay, we don't have Texas, Texas A&M anymore. Uh, West Virginia's in this conference now, and so is TCU. It was like, who are these teams going to end their season with? You know? Right. Like, who's going to be, like, that rivalry? And for the first, like, four or five years, they just stuck us with Iowa State. <laughs> and it was like, and we, you know, they, that was when they were really bad. Yeah. So we like were like 4-0 against them. And uh, they just didn't feel any way towards them. And now they've kind of, like, done the rotating thing to end the season. Right. Now, I want that to be our rivalry. <laughs> Just to, like, rub it in Jamie Pollard's face. Well, you know what? Write a letter to Bob Bowlesby. I feel like yeah. I could probably get it to him. Yeah, maybe I'll send a strongly worded email to Matt. And you can forward it. And be like, hey, can you send this to your dad? Yeah, it might be better if you handwrite it, though. I feel like that would resonate better. Okay. You know, that that makes it look like you really I should put, put these points out on a piece of paper for him. You should. They might even change their mind. It might not be too late. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Jamie's been bragging about how many tickets they sold already. 